Hello, beautiful people. Uh, we're going to be going over the pretest for the, um, I believe where this is unit five in the IM3 textbook, but it's everything about inverses, radicals, uh, rationals. So we're, we're going to just go through this. That way you can all be very successful on your assessment that is coming up. So we're going to jump right into number one. But before we do, uh, just a warning, we are on campus, so if there is an intercom or a loud ringing of a bell, I apologize in advance. Also, I am human, so if there are any mistakes on this pretest, please point them out, let me know, that way we both can learn from our mistakes. And again, I am human, so mistakes are, are a fact of life, so mistakes can happen. Please let me know if they do. All right, let's jump into number one. Find the inverse of each function. So to find an inverse here, we kind of have some steps. Step number one is to rewrite this in terms of, excuse me, I'm just taking off my keys here. Okay, rewrite this in terms of y. So we have y is equal to the x minus two. And this minus two is on the outside. So we have y is equal to the fifth root of x minus two minus two. So think of it as this here is in a bubble, and then you have minus two outside of that bubble, okay? But before we continue, we need to switch places for the x and the y. So we have y is equal to fifth root of x minus, oops, excuse me, that should be a y. So we wanna switch the places of y and x, so y minus two, minus two. And again, this part here is in its own little bubble, so we need to deal with what's outside of that bubble. Uh, excuse me, minus two is outside of that bubble. So we need to take care of that. So I'm gonna add two to both sides. So we have x plus two is equal to the fifth root of y minus two. Now our objective now is to solve for the new y after you switch for the x and y. So we wanna isolate the y. So now we have x plus 2 is equal to the fifth root of y minus 2. Again, we want to get rid of this fifth root, so I'm going to raise both sides to the fifth power. So then these are opposites of each other, so they undo each other, they cancel. So then we have my, excuse me, y minus 2 is equal to x plus 2 to the fifth power. And again, our objective is to get y by itself, so I'm going to add 2 to both sides y is then equal to x plus two, oops, x plus two to the fifth power plus two. And again, we are trying to solve for the inverse. So then this here is no longer y, that is not y, it is actually the inverse of g of x. So we have to use inverse notation. And so since our original function was g of x, so the inverse of that, And there you go, you have it. Now, most commonly you use uh, the inverse notation of f of x, but because our original was g of x, we, we have to use g. All right, this one here, state if the given functions are inverses. Remember, when we are using composition of functions, we're setting f of g of x, and then we have g of f of x. You have to check both. If one of them fails, then you do not have to check the other. But if one of them does equal to x or whatever variable you have, sometimes you'll see n, it doesn't matter what letter. But if you get just that variable at the end, you have to check both. If both of them are equal to your variable, in this case x, then yes, they are inverses. If one of them fails, then no, they are not inverses of each other. So let's double check. So I'm going to start out with f of g of x. And the way I like to do it is I like to start writing out my f of x. But when it comes to writing the x of f of x, I then take whatever my g of x is equal to and I plug it in. So then I have x plus 1 cubed. And then I finish that off with my cubed from my f of x. Okay. Oh, excuse me. Sorry about that. All right, so we have 2 minus x plus 1 cubed, and then we have it cubed again. So if we have an exponent raised to an exponent, 
that I believe is our power property of exponents. So then we multiply these two. So we have three times three is nine. And so from here, you can kind of tell that things are just not going to cancel out because we have two minus, and then we have to write out x plus one nine times. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cheat a little bit. I'm going to put a dot, dot, dot. So this right here is nine times. And no matter how you, you work on this, because we are just multiplying and multiplying out, there's nothing that will cancel with each other, so therefore it is not equal to x. So we can say no, not inverses. If they are inverses, I promise you guys it's going to be a lot less complicated than this. You're going to end up with pretty things, canceling out, undoing each other, opposite operations. Uh, if you just keep multiplying and multiplying out, it will never um, equal to an x, just one variable. All right, simplify each and state the excluded values. So here's the thing with these here. GCF is your friend, okay? GCF, you, step number one, always, always. And then step number two is factor the remainder. Now, when you use, when you pull out the GCF, is you really are factoring out the GCF. So you're factoring from step number one but you have to always remember that GCF is your friend and you want to pull that out, okay? So I'm looking at 14, 94, and 60. Uh, let's see if 14, 14 does not go into 94. Uh, 14, let's see, 14 goes into 60. It does not, but let's see if 7 goes into 94. So 94 divided by 7. Still doesn't work, and 60 divided by uh, 90, excuse me, uh, 7, that still doesn't work. So I'm thinking 2, because I know 2 goes into here, 2 goes into here, and 2 goes into here, because all of these are even. So I'm going to pull out a 2. So I have 7x squared minus 94 divided by 2 is 47x plus, and then this is, what is this, 30? That's on top. Keep moving the paper, I apologize. At uh, the bottom, again, I'm going to factor out 2. So then I have x squared left over minus 10x plus, uh, what is this, 20, 24? There you go. Okay, so do not forget, again, do not forget that because we are multiplying these, Stuff can cancel out or stuff can factor. Now, you don't have to do this immediately. Um, you can save that for later, but I am going to get rid of them now, um, simplify them now, so that way it can, it can make it look prettier for us. Okay, after that, since you have a trinomial here, we're going to use the guess and check method. Now, I like the diamond method when you have a coefficient of not one. I definitely like the guess and, uh, excuse me, the diamond method. And the diamond method is where you multiply these two. So 7 times 30 is 210. And then you write what your middle term is here. Now, this top and bottom doesn't matter. If you want to split them, that's fine. But what I always do is I put a plus and I, uh, excuse me, I put a times and a plus. So that way I know that I need two values that multiply to 210. But when I add them together, they give me negative 7, excuse me, negative 47. So I'm thinking, what are my factors, again, that's your keyword, of 210? Well, 210, I have 21 and 10. 21 times 10 is 210. And then you just keep factoring. And then once you have all of your factors from your factor tree, you can see what kind of combination gives you what you want. Um, so then we have, what is this, 7 times 3. 7 times 3 is 21, and then I have 5 times 2 is 10. So again, I need some sort of combination that ends up being a negative 7. So let's see. 7 times 3 times 2 is 42. So if I do 42 times 5, 42 times 5, is 210. So what I did is I did 7, 3, and 2. 
and then I got 5 as my other one. Okay, so 7 times 3 times 2 is 42, and then I need negatives. 5 plus 2 is 47. Negative times a negative is a positive. Okay, so after you have that, you're going to make these into fractions, and you're going to put your leading coefficient up as your numerator, and then simplify your fractions, but keep them in fractions. For example, 7 divided by 42 is 1 sixth, but I'm keeping it as a fraction because I want to know where my negative is going to be. Uh, 7 divided by negative 5, that can't happen, uh, so we're going to leave it. That's in its simplest form. Then this tells you, the numerator tells you the coefficient. Uh, the denominator tells you the constant. So my coefficient is 1. That's in front of x. And then my constant is minus 6. And then my other fraction is 7 is my coefficient. My constant is 5. Now the bottom one is going to be a little bit easier. You still can use the diamond method. Your coefficient is going to be 1. So when you write out your fraction here, you're just going to have to put a 1 in front. I'm going to just do the guess and check method like this. So I know I'm going to need an x and an x. Two numbers that multiply, excuse me, to get 24, but when I add them together, give me negative 10. So I'm thinking of the factors of 24. 24 factors we have, well, we can do 8 and 3 or 6 and 4. Still the same thing. So we have 4 and 2. And then 3 is just 3. And then 2 and 2. So let's see. I need two numbers that add up to negative 10. So I know 3 is going to be one of them. 3. And I'm drawing a blank. So let, let's think about it. Let's, let's do this together. So we have 4 times 6. Excuse me, 4 plus 6 is 10. Ooh, there you go. So let's use 2 and 3. So we have 6. And then we have 4 is our other one. And then we want it to add up to negative 10. So these are going to be negative. But when I multiply these, they're going to be 24. There you go. Now, you didn't have to use this factor tree. I just happened to choose my factors of 8 and 3. Um, you could have chosen 6 and 4 immediately if you saw that. Okay, so then... Factor, factor, factor. We have factored this. Keep factoring until you have either something that's prime that you cannot factor anymore, or if you're, uh, the, the uh, exponent of x is 1. In this case, we have uh, the exponent of x is 1, so there's no more factoring to do. But because factoring kind of pulls things out, we have multiplication and division. So these are basically multiplication. These are times, and this is divided by. So when you have something like x minus 6, divided by x minus 6. This cancels out, gives you a big old 1. So you are left over with x, excuse me, 7x minus 5 and x minus 4. Okay, now if we look back at the directions, it says simplify each and state the excluded value. So there's two parts to this question. Please don't miss out on points. So excluded values, you're looking at the original factored form of your denominator. So here's our original, but this is not factored form, so I'm moving on. Here's your factored form right here, and you're going to, anytime you see an x, just draw an arrow, and that's going to represent one of your excluded values. Excluded values are values that x cannot be, because when it is that value, then that means that our denominator will be zero. So we have x minus 6 is equal to 0, and x minus 4 is equal to 0. This is side work. You don't actually have to do this. You can just ask yourself, what does this have to be in order for this to be 0? But when we're asking that question, we're actually asking ourselves this right here. We're solving two equations in our head. So we're basically solving for x, and we're solving for x on here. We're setting both of them equal to 0 to say, hey, what does x have to be in order for that little piece to be 0? And in this case, x has to be 6 and x has to be 4 for each one of these to equal to 0. Therefore, there are our excluded values. So x cannot equal to 4 and x cannot equal to 6. And those are your excluded values on that one. Okay, let's jump into number 4. 
I'm just going to separate it with, with a line. There you go. Now, this one here is your division, okay, division. When we are dividing here, it is you're dividing fractions. When you're dividing fractions, you're actually multiplying by the reciprocal. So I'm going to rewrite this so we don't get confused. We have 5x uh, cubed minus 50x squared. And as I'm rewriting this, I'm already noticing that there's a GCF that we're going to have to take care of. 12x plus 36 and 20x plus 60. So whenever you have division here, remember K of C. Keep the first fraction, flip the second, change the sign, K of C. Okay, so now that we have done K of C, we're going to start to factor. Factor, remember, step number one is always factor out the GCF. So then I'm looking at this one. I can factor out a 5x squared. So then left over, I have an x minus uh, 10 all over 6. And then this is being multiplied by, uh, again, I can factor out a 12 here, GCF, x, my, excuse me, x plus 3. And then we have factor out a 20, x plus In factor, factor, factor until you can't factor anymore. And then because this is just multiplication, we're going to multiply across. But before you multiply across, make sure that there are things that you can cancel. Um, hopefully, fingers crossed, you can simplify some things. Um, and that will that will definitely make your life easier. I guarantee that. So one thing that I can cancel out is I see an x plus 3. And, oh, keep moving the paper. I'm sorry. x plus 3 is x plus 3. This fraction right here can simplify. So I'm going to rewrite this. I have a... 5x squared times x minus 10 all over 6. And then this is times, I no longer have my x plus 3. Uh, what is this? 2 goes into 12 6 times. 2 goes into 20 uh, 10 times. But I think I can simplify that further. All right? Oh, because 6 goes in 4. I'm thinking out loud. So 12 divided by 20, let's see. What does that simplify to? That does simplify to 3 fifths, but I'm actually going to leave it here uh, because what I want to see is I have a 6 and a 6 here. I understand that I can simplify this fraction further, but I, I won't do it because I can already cancel out my 6 and a 6. My 5 can be canceled out, but I'm left over with a 2 in the denominator. So then what is my final Simplified fraction, I have an x squared times x minus 10 all over 2. And again, we're going back to the original factor denominator and stating what can x not be. In this case, x cannot be negative 3. We have only one excluded value. Okay, uh, so this concludes part one of your pretest review. Um, if there are any mistakes, please let me know. If you have any questions, please let me know. Okay. And I hope um, everything made sense. And again, if it doesn't, let me know.